Right then, uh, I am a bit late with this one, but I wanted to give this phone the credit it deserves, because I'll be honest, even though I think there's a couple of flaws with it, which could be looked at as nitpicking, I think it's an underrated phone. So, it's a good looking phone, right? Black aluminum frame paired with this meteorite gray brushed metal look. It's sharp, but that glass back shows fingerprints like an oil spill in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, there's an infrared port at the top next to one of the stereo speakers if you care about that sort of thing. And while we're on the topic of stereo speakers, they sound pretty damn good. Uh, they're full and loud, but even though they're supposedly tuned by Harman Kardon, I can't find any branding anywhere in the settings, but I mean, they still sound good, so whatever. Now, the capacitive power button fingerprint reader has been pretty fast and accurate for me. I have had to learn to double tap the screen to wake if I'm just checking notifications instead of pressing the button, otherwise it'll just unlock when I don't need it to. But that being said, a capacitive fingerprint reader might be the answer for those of you that don't like in-display fingerprint readers. Now, I'm not usually a fan of Chinese phone UIs other than OnePlus's Oxygen OS, and even that's starting to get to be a bit much for me, but yo, this phone has a ton of fun little UI elements and animations that I've really been enjoying while navigating throughout the phone. And even though MIUI or MyUI, MIUI, whatever, isn't the lightest Android skin around, with a Snapdragon 888 and 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, 12 in my phone, it's not just snappy and smooth, it feels very fluid. Now, you pair those specs with a 6.7 inch, 120 hertz, 2400 by 1080p AMOLED display sitting behind some Gorilla Glass Victus, and you've got yourself a pretty sweet gaming phone. Well, <laughs> that is until it reaches its thermal limits and drops you from 120 hertz right down to 60 after about only 20 minutes or so of gaming. I mean, yeah, 60 hertz is fine, but have you ever gone from 120 hertz to 60 hertz on a PC? I mean, it's not brain tumor inducing, but it's not great. Now, I looked into this and here's what happened. Uh, basically, reviewers were complaining that the phone got too hot while gaming, even though literally every phone gets hot while gaming. So Xiaomi sent out an update that thermal throttles performance much earlier than before, which is pretty lame. So you can thank other reviewers for that. Anyways, display quality? Awesome. Uh, there's support for Dolby Vision as well as HDR10 Plus with a max brightness of 800 nits and 1000 at its peak, which seems to be fairly common with non-ultra premium phones these days that can get a few hundred nits brighter. But because we've got such a big display with a 1080p resolution, uh, pixel density is pretty low at just 395 ppi, which to be fair isn't really all that noticeable when you're actually using the phone while scrolling through social media or like watching content or gaming for example. Now the 5000 milliamp hour battery battery has been great with normal usage, so at like 80% brightness most of the time, running at 120 hertz full time, I was easily getting a full day in a bit with about 7 to 8 hours of screen on time. And there's a bunch of pretty heavy duty battery saver options in the settings, which might even get you another couple hours more. And even while gaming, the battery still holds up for about 5 hours, although that's not really surprising considering the heavy handed performance throttling after only 20 or so minutes. But even if the battery did drain fast, when you've got a 120 watt wall charger that comes in the bomb that'll charge your device from zero to 100% in under 20 minutes. How concerned are you really about battery life? I mean, I don't know how long your poops are, but I usually got a full charge with this phone by the time I flush the toilet, so. The triple camera setup includes a 108 megapixel main shooter, which pixel bins down to 27 megapixels unless you manually select the fold resolution. Uh, there's also an eight megapixel ultra wide and a five megapixel two times telephoto. And photos look, Decent, leaning towards good. Like on a sunny day, HDR can really make colors pop, but highlights do get blown out fairly easily unless it's an overcast kind of day. But then on those days, I noticed exposure suffers a bit and so images can look a little darker than they really are. Um, I also noticed there's a color temperature shift between the main and ultra wide cameras with the ultra wide favoring a warmer look, but all in all, the rear cameras do produce fairly decent images in most cases. Just watch out for all that lens flare or don't, you know, maybe you dig that kind of look. Now this phone will do 8K video, but without stabilization. And let's face it, I mean, 8K video, it's just a gimmick, right? 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second does support image stabilization though, and overall looks really solid. Now the 16 megapixel selfie camera is super strange though. Skin tones look fine and seems to preserve highlights on the face, but unless the lighting is bang on, images look 
very flat and over sharpened. Uh, anyways, wrapping up, you know, it's a nice phone. Uh, it's got a fun UI, good performance, good display, great battery life, crazy fast charging, and decent cameras. But with the performance throttling while gaming along with the cameras still needing some work, especially the selfie camera, while I wouldn't tell you not to consider it, I'd strongly recommend you look at options from brands like Samsung, uh, OnePlus, or even the new Pixel 6 for a little bit more money. <laughs> anyways, I think that's gonna do it for this one. So thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.